Hi, I'm Jay Robbins at Robbins Real Estate Group. Thanks for watching our video series about the one to four family residential contract. This is video 13. I could have called it video 12A because sometimes you're buying or selling a condo and you can't use the one to four family residential contract for a condo. You can use it for townhomes or single family homes, but in the condo contract, there are a couple of key differences that I want to go over with you here. Now, most of this contract works almost exactly the same way, right down to the paragraph numbers. If you understand the one to four family residential contract, you will understand most of this contract, but here are the difference and there's a big gotcha in here, especially when it comes to the homeowners association. The first thing we'll discuss is the difference in paragraph two. Because condos do not come with land, the legal description of the property that's changing hands is a little bit different. You'll notice there's a building number to be named and a project to be named. It's just a slightly different way of describing the real property that will change hands. You'll also notice that unlike in a townhome or the one to four family residential contract, parking spaces have to be defined in this condominium contract. Probably the most important thing to notice as far as differences between the one to four contract and the condo contract is this paragraph that discusses the homeowner's documents and the resale certificate. So in these contracts, the buyer typically wants to see the rules, bylaws, declarations, and a resale certificate. Typically, if there's a mortgage involved, there must be a resale certificate delivered. Why is this important? Notice there is a hard deadline in here that the buyer can back out of the contract after receiving these documents. Within six days after receiving these documents, the buyer can terminate the contract and get a refund of their earnest money for any reason. So it's really important as a seller, if you are selling a condominium, to make sure that the condominium resale certificate, rules, bylaws, declarations, everything defined in the contract is either delivered to the buyer before they sign the contract or very quickly. Otherwise, the buyer can terminate up until six days after they get those documents. Why is this important for a buyer to look out for? Well, as a buyer, you want to make sure that you read the rules, bylaws, and declarations. Why? Well, you might have a pet that's not allowed by the homeowners association. Homeowners associations will often limit the number of pets or restrict the size of pets that you can have in your property. We've also seen homeowners associations limit the number of rental properties in their project. And why is this important for a buyer? Well, as a buyer, you may want to have the option to use your property as a rental property, but the homeowners association may not allow it. These are all really important things for you to look at as a buyer as well. So if you have a great real estate broker, of course, they will help guide you through the process. And if you have any questions about how this works, please feel free to give me a call, send me an email, or leave me a message below. I hope you've enjoyed watching our series on residential contracts in Texas. Make sure you stay tuned. Our next module will go over the common forms and addenda that go along with these contracts. Things like non-realty items addendum. What does that mean if you want to keep the refrigerator? There's a special form for that. Third party financing addendum, seller's temporary residential lease, lots of other forms that we will frequently see attached to these contracts. In our next module, we'll go over the most common forms that you'll see. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.